This is Johanna Thomas talking personalised DNA code analysis with the fabulous Dr. Anthony J. Quite honestly, one of the most enlightening reports I have ever had done, giving specific and actionable ways to improve your health based on your unique DNA code. Some great biohacking data to get started with. Now, Dr. Anthony, welcome to The Way Forward Show. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, Dr. J is the founder of AJ Consulting Company. You are a DNA analyst, you're a health expert, and a scientist at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. I am super excited to be talking to you today. Um, I want to find out what you do. I find out, I find what you do fascinating. Um, your work from uh, DNA is extraordinary. Does this, because it's from our DNA, does this change um, throughout our life, or are the results always the same? Yeah, they're the same. I mean, that's one of the beauties of looking at your DNA is it doesn't change. So the information that you, you know, that you learn from your genetics, it, you carry it with you for the rest of your life. Whereas some, there, we have something called epigenetics, mm. which does change, and that's more complicated. But for now, the DNA is super useful, too. Amazing. And how did you get started into this? <clears throat> um, I actually did my own DNA. So when 23andMe started using, you know, doing those DNA kits where you spit into a tube and then they yeah. give you your DNA data, I started basically doing myself and my family members. And I just realized it was so powerful in terms of understanding different aspects of your own personal health yeah. that I, you know, I started branching out. And initially I was just doing detox genes and looking at how people get rid of different chemicals that are in their environments and how their liver breaks them down and that sort of thing. And, mm. and it's kind of expanded into all these different categories. Amazing. And so who are your clients? Who needs to have this done? Oh, everybody, really. I mean, you know, I, I, the client base is super variable. Um, I do professional athletes, but I also do people that are just, you know, looking to optimize their own personal health and mm. everybody in between. So it's really broad. Amazing. So let's go back to basics. Uh, if someone wants to have this done, what is the process and how do you get the results that you do? Yeah, the process starts with the 23andMe, mm -hmm. um, and there's other companies that do that, a similar service where you spit in the tube. So people do that independently, and then they bring that information to me. So all I need is what's called the raw data file. It's literally just the code, you know, so I just need the DNA code. And then I, I have my own software I've, I've written, and I use that to analyze people's genetics. So it's literally just go through the AJ Consulting Company website, mm -hmm. and they can they can find me from there. And it's as simple as just contacting me if you have other questions. Fantastic. Okay, so if we look at the results now, you break down the report into five areas. You've got brain optimization genes, diet optimization genes, vitamin hormone and detox genes, gym genes, and sleep genes. So as right. as a client, the report gives us basically highlights the bad stuff is that right the, where the polymorphisms are exactly yeah I, I always like to say people have thousands of good genes everybody has thousands of good genes but i only want to find the bad ones mm -hmm. because once you learn those you can figure out ways to fix them it's not hopeless <laughs> like yeah. it's not it's not scary it's it's really enlightening and then you use that knowledge for your own power to fix the problems Exactly. You'll stop the problems coming in the first place. Either, right. right. Yep. Yep. So, and then you've got two variables. You've got a plus um, slash plus, and you've got a plus slash minus on each on each thing that comes up. What's the difference between that? Yeah, usually a plus plus means a worse issue uh, because we have two copies of DNA in every cell in our body. Oh. So basically you can have two bad copies of a gene you can have one good copy and one bad copy or you can have two good copies and again i'm not interested when people have two good copies but it gives you a little bit of a sense of how bad the issue might actually be yeah sure interesting so if we look at my results as a case study just because i've had that done from you let's explain right. to the listeners some amazing findings that they too might get so one thing i know that you thought was fascinating as well is the fact that i have two very rare genes the ABCG5 and the ABCG8 <clears throat> that mean that right. for me, plant sterols could actually be harmful. Can you elaborate on this and what as a result you would recommend for someone like myself? Yeah, it's it's rare. And again, I think you were plus minus, right? Uh, yes, I think I was, yeah. And so, you know, at least you have that going for you. You don't <laughs> have two bad cups. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. But, but that gene is involved in processing 
plants sterile. So plants actually make cholesterol. You know, everybody talks about human cholesterol, like LDL and HDL and VLDL and all these forms of human cholesterol. Mm. <clears throat> but plants make totally different cholesterol. And basically, your body doesn't process the plant cholesterol very well. So you want to be careful not to have too many plants in your diet, frankly. You don't, especially plants that have a lot of plant cholesterol or a lot of plant matter. Mm. So like plant vitamins are fine, like resveratrol and just basically purified supplements from plants or plants with minimal cholesterol, like berries and things like that. Right. Um, but any plants with a lot of plant cholesterol, your body's going to struggle to manage that. Yeah, and you know what? That, I mean, some of the foods these days, they're even fortified with plant sterols, you know, to be so-called healthier. You know, you get a lot of margarines right. and yogurts right. and all that stuff. So it's quite scary, but it is also knowledge is power for me, you know, I think. And because that could, if I have too much of it, it can cause a calcium buildup in my arteries. Your arteries. Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. It can basically, and the doctors won't check it because they're looking for human forms of cholesterol, but mm. these are plant cholesterols, right? So they're not normally checking for that. And again, it's a rare gene, so why would they? You yeah. know, but so it comes up, I mean, if I have a high cholesterol on a normal um, reading, that doesn't define between plant cholesterol or animal cholesterol, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. you have to get more specific. And the doctors can check it. We have the technology to check it huh. if you request it, but they generally won't as a default, so it's a good thing to know. That is a good thing to know. I will definitely have to check. But I have been doing some research myself, and I um, read that one thing I could do is uh, intaking apple cider vinegar every day, which helps mm. prevent the calcium buildup in the arteries. So that could yeah. be beneficial, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and helps your gut, your gut bacteria, which is good. Yeah, it helps yeah. so many wonderful things. Okay, so another um, point of note on my report was that I don't have any specific, like, breast cancer BRCA genes, but I do have every possible bad estrogen gene as a plus plus. Right. I mean, that's pretty yeah. extreme, right? So is this is oh, it yeah. quite a, a common case, and what would you recommend for these kind of things? Yeah, I mean, one of the unique aspects of estrogen is there's a lot of genes you can have issues with mm. and again you've got the long list of them so it's it's unfortunate but um but most people do have some estrogen related issues in their genetics uh -huh. and it's i think it's important to identify those and then figure out exactly what they are and how to fix them generally getting into a sauna is really useful because you actually sweat out more estrogen than you than you pee out Interesting. Then, yeah, they've done skin patch testing with literally, it's like a nicotine patch that goes on your skin except without the nicotine. And then they, they have people that go in saunas. They have group of people, groups of people that don't go in saunas. And the ones that go in saunas literally sweat out a lot of these estrogens. Mm, that's and and then they, they measure their urine too. And it, sometimes they don't have any in their urine and they've got a whole bunch on those skin patches. So that's one important method if you have some of those estrogen issues. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's, but unfortunately also if you're pregnant, you obviously can't do that. Right. Um, so could, would something like dim help or milk thistle or maybe a low oxalate green powder, do you think, or? Yeah, it depends on the genetics and it depends on the person, but, um, you know, usually I just recommend eating brassica plants, which are broccoli and things like that. Yeah, well, I can't have those because my biome says that I can't have that. But, you know, yeah, well, exactly, and, the, and those are the plant cholesterols yeah. for you. Again, that's pretty rare, but in general, I would just go with that. But, but yeah, for you, in your unique situation, you could go with something like DIM, like methane. Yeah. Um, but you have to be careful with the dosing with that, because sometimes if you take too much, it actually acts like estrogen. It does the opposite of what you want it to do. Oh. It's, kind of a, it's kind of a touchy supplement. Yeah, because um, it works with your DHT, doesn't it, your testosterone? Yeah, okay. so that there's... It down a different pathway. Yep. Interesting. Now, you are actually an estrogen expert, and you have written a book, haven't you? Tell us about that. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, there's all these artificial estrogens that we're exposed to regularly. I mean, literally on a daily basis in many cases. A lot of them are in the plastics in particular. So plastic bottles, um, plastic food, mm -hmm. cling film, all that stuff, yeah? Yep, yep, and they leach, um, and... And they act like estrogen. I mean, these chemicals, 
you know, you definitely don't want a lot of them in your system, and everybody seems to have a lot of them in the system these days when they do che- blood checking. Mm-hmm. And and they don't have a standard check. You, like for, as a consumer, you can't just go in and get your blood checked. But in research studies, we can check it, and we do, and we find basically everybody has these chemicals. And then the personal care products are filled with a lot of these estrogen chemicals like parabens and phthalates. Yeah, yeah. And the sunscreen chemicals, I mean, it just goes on and on. So I ended up, you know, compiling a list of these things, and I felt compelled to write a book about it because nobody was putting it all together into one story. Yeah, um, that's a great thing. And where can people purchase your book from, Anthony? Yeah, it's on Amazon, and okay. and then, of course, it's on my AJ Consulting Company website. And um, the name of it? It's called Estro Generation. Estro and and you're in, 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 in the UK, you'd probably pronounce it Estro Generation. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> Estro Generation. Okay, well, that's fascinating. Well, listeners, make sure you go to Amazon and get yourself a copy of that book. It may well save your life. Um, now, I would like to say that someone, um, if someone has a report done from you and they've obviously been through the discussion with you or you have quite a few of your team members that do it as well, don't you? Um, having someone like myself, a holistic wellness coach or a practitioner that can help them to activate the findings and negotiate or biohack their daily life could be a good thing to do, don't you think? Oh yeah, yeah, that's the most, that's the most beneficial way to do it is to do the DNA once and then yeah. bring that report to your coach yeah. and then work on the day-to-day stuff because it's always a work in progress, right? You it's can't not like fix it overnight and you can't do everything. Exactly. I mean, it's, there's a lot of stuff there. It's a it's, lot of information. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just try, I mean, even if you wanted to do everything, I don't know what you'd eat. I don't know what you'd do. I mean, it's just, you know, right. it's sort of like, you know, finding a happy medium somewhere along the way, right? Yeah. And then sometimes you have to check your thyroid hormones and sometimes you need to replace, you know, you need to do hormone replacements and things like that. You know, it's different for different people in different situations and there's more extremes, there's less extremes and a lot of that requires expertise and monitoring and follow up and things like that. Not for the faint hearted, but definitely well worth it. Well, I think the listeners are convinced that having their DNA analyzed with you or one of your team is a no brainer. The results are life changing and life enhancing, a must. Now, importantly, tell us where can they sign up with you, Dr. Anthony? Yeah, I mean, um, ajconsultingcompany.com. Okay. Unfortunately, you have to spell that all out. The company has to be included, so ajconsultingcompany.com. I know it's a terrible website name, but that's <laughs> it's stuck a long oh, time it ago. What it, it is what it says I on the box. I can't change now. <laughs> yep. Yeah, okay. And your social media that's site it. so we can support and yeah, follow inst- you? Inst- well, Instagram is my favorite, and that's just my name, Anthony GJ. G is my middle name, so Anthony GJ is Instagram. Okay, perfect. And finally, as the time is running away, what is the future for you and your brand? Well, I'm going to continue to grow. I mean, I had to add coaches because we had so we have so many clients and yeah. we're growing so fast. So I think people are finally recognizing how valuable this service is to understanding their health. And again, it carries all the way through the rest of your life. The knowledge that you take from your DNA is going to stay with you. Amazing. Like, it's just r- ridiculous. And I have a question before we go. Is can the code ever be expanded so that in the future more results could be discovered or are you at the max? Yeah, well, I mean... We're going to be doing more in the future, but, you know, it's it's a never-ending. That's I think we're going to be doing full genomes in the future. Right now, those are a lot more expensive. Right. And the, the information's not there yet for that, but it's still quite a ways away, 10 years maybe for that. Yeah, there's already a lot to take in. So, well, best of luck with everything. Thank you so much Thanks. for your time, Dr. Anthony. We appreciate it. Thank you. This is Johanna Thomas, your resident holistic nutritionist for The Way Forward. Dr. Anthony, it is a pleasure to have you back for an extended chat on the Pure Joe YouTube cast. Now, let's get more into AJ Consulting, wellness trends, your routine, biohacking, etc. Are you ready? Oh yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> okay, pleasure. So if we take a deeper look into some of my results, one thing I noticed was that I had four leaky gut plus plus gene issues telling me to supplement with mushrooms, uh, medicinal yeah. mushrooms. Now, there's the medicinal mushrooms I know are cultivated in oats, um, so I know that they're gluten-free, or normally can be gluten-free, but if, for example, my biome results, they say that I can't have oats, do you still think that medicinal mushrooms are, would be safe to take? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the, mo- the most important component of the mushrooms for your gut, it's called ergothionine. 
Okay. And that's something, it's a vitamin that nobody talks about. You, I never had heard of it until I was researching some of these genes. Huh. And the gene, in one of the particular genes you have, it's actually an ergothionine transporter. So it helps you, it helps your body take in this particular vitamin. And again, nobody's ever heard of ergothionine, this vitamin, because nobody talks about it, unfortunately. But it's still, it's a vitamin, right? Your body needs it, yeah. and you can't make it. I mean, that's the definition of a vitamin. Right. Um, and then one of the, I think one of the reasons most people don't discuss ergothionine is because your gut bacteria do make it for you. Mm -hmm. But the problem in your case with your genetics, and this is a fairly common problem, it's not it's not rare, at least. And the problem is you don't take that vitamin up very well. So even if your gut bacteria are making it, it helps to get a little bit of an extra boost. And mushrooms, I mean, plants have a little bit of ergothionine, but mushrooms have like a thousand times more than plants. So, okay. you know. And they don't have any plant sterile mushrooms, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, right. No. That's a bonus. And so when on your report as well, for example, it said under my metformin that I have a plus plus, but there were no notes. What does that mean? Yeah, the metformin one, I always like to leave it the, the notes empty there so I can discuss it with people because it's a prescription drug in America. Um, now, in Europe, it might actually be different. I don't know. If, no, it's prescription and, here as well. Yeah, in Canada, I know you can get it over the counter in a lot of other countries. Mm. <clears throat> but metformin is, you know, it's an interesting, it's quote-unquote drug. Uh, and the reason I put quotations around it is because it's actually derived from a French lilac plant. So it's kind of a plant supplement, but they managed to make it a prescription drug because some people get diarrhea from it. Oh. And of course, if you get diarrhea, you pretty much know you're getting diarrhea, so you'd know to stop, in my opinion, but they yeah. still want you to get monitored by a doctor. Um, but it's it's the reason a lot of people take it now is because it extends lifespan in many cases, at least in animal studies, of course. In yeah. humans, we don't have 100-year studies that that you can determine, uh, you know, if it's going to work, but it indic it's probably pretty likely it's going to extend lifespan. But the thing about your genetics, you're a poor responder to metformin okay. in terms of your genes. So basically going through all the headache of getting the prescription and all the extra work, it's probably not even worth it. Right. Okay. So where you've got, for example, as well, things like heavy metals and there's no result there at all that means that right. i don't have any problems with heavy metals or gene wise is that exactly. right? yeah exactly i mean well okay. certain people some people have different like some people have issues with their brain clearing heavy metals mm -hmm. but then their liver does a really good job clearing heavy metals and some people's the opposite some people's brains clear them well and some people their livers don't clear them very well or whatever so there's a lot of different components to heavy metal genetics but but yeah, in your case, you're pretty good. Um, and then for heart disease lectin related, I had three plus minuses, but no notes. So what's, correct, what's the yeah. issue? Do I have an issue with lectins then? Yeah, somewhat. And uh, the reason I don't have notes there in that case is because when you have plus minuses, it's not that big of a deal. Okay. So it, you know, I don't have any like really strong recommendations where I'm saying, oh, you absolutely have to do this or that or that thing. But it's still important to flag those genes because you do have those again they're plus minus so it's not as big of an issue mm. but but if you come up with a calcium score like a calcium ct scan that indicates you have plaque in your artery yeah you know or something like that then you would actually want to get real serious about how do you eliminate those plaques in your arteries and in that case, you'd get, want to get really serious about lectins and read like a book like The Plant Paradox by Stephen Gundry. Yep. yep. And, and go really strict on his diet, for example. Yeah. Um, okay. Where, whereas if, if you were a plus plus, by the way, if you had two, two bad copies of those genes, mm -hmm. I would have... Put something in. The, I would have had notes about avoiding lectins real strict and reading that book, you know. Yeah. And, Definitely. So. Okay. And then, um, now, as you know, I had my Viome done with the Viome mm -hmm. test from um, Naveen Jain, and I'm finding it quite confusing, and I just want your advice for someone like myself who does a lot of tracking of, you know, data, whether it's stool and whatever. So a lot of my stool resu results from my Viome contradict what it says in, in, my, in my gene report. So, for example, under the pesticides and cleaning chemicals, I have a plus plus, and it says avoid flaxseed oils 
um, and or you know certain pesticides. But in my Viome, it says that flax is really good for me, and you know pumpkin seeds and all these things. But again, I'm supposed to stay away from plant sterols. So I right. guess I should go by my DNA. What what would you do? Yeah, for sure, go by the DNA. I mean, part of it is they probably want you to get more omega threes and things like that, yeah. and you can get some of that from from flax. But in my opinion, it's better to avoid the flax because your body doesn't do well with the estrogens in flax. They're yeah. called lignans. Okay. And so, you know, I would get the omega-3s from fish oil or algae pills or something like that. Yeah, I, got, and, I take now rainbow trout oil, like highly oh, yeah. sustainable organic rainbow trout. So. Right. Something like that I think is better. So I think having the knowledge of your genetics is a is the fundamental thing and mm -hmm. then you move from there in terms of the different metrics that you track yeah because i think you know because there's always a little flexibility a lot, doesn't it yeah the gut changes exactly there's a lot of flexibility there yeah yeah okay and then uh one of my other issues was to avoid vitamin e now that is fascinating but only in the form of uh how do we say it tropical to cough yep, exactly yeah which is actually, I've been noticing, because I've been trying to become very aware of this, it's in so many supplements, foods, right. oils, for even for what right. I put on my skin, you know? So right. Right. it's like, right. that is a, that's probably one of the biggest minefields I've had to, to, to deal with. I listened to, you know, the podcast you recommended. Um, but yeah, finding, isn't that interesting? Very interesting. But even finding those ones is just not even optionable. Right. Yeah, it's an unusual thing, right? Because people take a multivitamin, for example, and they think they're doing themselves a real favor and they think it's real healthy. But almost all the multivitamins have this fake version of vitamin E called tocopherol. Yes, exactly. And Yeah, oh. and it's hard to pronounce and not a lot of people talk about it, but it is well known that that's, you know, your body has to deal with that. And for you, if you don't deal well with that, it literally causes... I lost you there. Hello? Oh, no. Anthony, are you there? Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I got you back. Hello? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, carry on. So, for you were saying for me... Yeah, so... Where did it, remind me where it cuts, sorry. Um, so basic, basically you were just saying that uh, it's added to all the different uh, supplements. The but, multivitamins? Yeah, the multivitamins. I mean, it's actually right. in my prenatal, so would you suggest that I stop taking that? Exactly. And find one without it? Yeah. Really? Gosh. Yeah, I would find one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the problem is it's going to cause inflammation. So, mm. again, it's a plus plus. So, it's it's substantial enough where I would avoid it and take the real form of vitamin E, the tocotrienols. Right. If I can find them. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, I have to say, as I do love the results that you get and the results that my Viome gets. I was just thinking, is there some way that you could even mold these together for, like, the ultimate results? So once you've done, once I've done, obviously, the DNA, I've ha I have that for life, and then every time I do a Viome, I send it to them, and then they incorporate the two, and then it comes out with an even more bespoke result. Or am I, like, living right. in cloud cuckoo land? Do you think it's possible? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think so. In fact, I think that's the way it should be, right? And I think the blood test should be incorporated with people's genetics. You know, it should be, like, the foundation for all the t all the biohacking and testing. Yes, yeah, I totally well, agree. I mean, is it that's just... the future. Is yeah. it just a code thing? I mean, can you and Naveen get it done? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to connect me with him, but... Um, okay, well, I will. Let's see. Let's make it our moonshot and see if we can do it. We can call it yeah. the Viomanite or something. It's definitely a good right. idea. Right. And so tell me, with regards to genes, um, do, do the genes come from our parents? Um, what, what we have now, what the results I have here, have any of that come from my parents? And do yep. I, will I ever pass anything that, all any of these bad stuff onto my kids? Yeah, so, um, you know, every cell in your body has two copies of DNA, except eggs and sperm cells. Hmm. Egg and sperm cells only have one copy of DNA. So then, of course, when they fuse together, that's where you got the copy from your mother and the copy of DNA from your father. <clears throat> and so, it, like, if you have a plus-plus gene, all of your kids are at least going to have one plus. Really? But then if wow. You, yeah. Okay. But then if your husband has that same gene and his version is minus-minus, then all of your kids will be plus-minus, for example, right? Okay. But if you guys are both plus plus on a gene, then all of your kids will be also a plus plus. And if you're both minus minus on a gene, all your kids will be minus minus, that sort of thing. Wow, 
Awesome. So you can predict. Yeah, it's really interesting to do families because it's real predictive. It's really interesting to see how how amazing it, it lines up and which genes the kids got from which parents. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, that is. So it's, so, so I, can, I, can I go through and blame anything on my mom or blame anything on my dad? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You'd have yeah, to know what theirs yeah. is first, right? Yeah, you don't know for sure what, who gave you which one, but got oftentimes, it. yeah, I do the full family so I can see it. Mm-hmm. Amazing, wow. So, um, so if I have so these negative genes for the estrogen and the plant sterols, then it's most likely that my kids will probably get them as well. Yeah, I mean, you have a plus minus, if I remember on some of those. So so they could get the good version, they could get the bad version. It would be like a 50-50. Yeah, wow. Um, And and they're such rare genes that your husband probably has a minus minus. So your kids are, they're at least not going to have a plus plus, most likely. Okay, well, that's good to know. Fascinating. I love it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more generally now. So as a doctor based in research, what are your thoughts on the coronavirus? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's a hot topic right now. Wow. Sure is. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not super concerned personally about it because I'm healthy. Okay. And my and my family is healthy, and um, and I'm not I'm not a smoker, and I don't have asthma, and I'm not frail, you know. But if I was any of those things, if I was a smoker, if I had asthma, if I was frail in any way or just obese, mm-hmm. then I would be concerned, and I would be really careful to stay away from you know, people, and I'd probably, you know, isolate myself for the next month or so, or, you know, some certain time frame. And I think one of the reasons it's scaring people so badly is the uh, the coronavirus outbreak in Italy yeah. um, has resulted in a high percentage of deaths. And it's, and frankly, I think it's because their population is a super high percentage of smokers. You know, people smoke yeah. a lot. If you go over there and you ride the trains in Rome and things like that, I mean, everybody seems to be smoking. Mm. And it Even attacks the your lungs a lot, doesn't it? The yeah, and your lungs are all damaged and they can't recover. The stem cells are all messed up. Mm. So, you know, so from that perspective, you know, again, people should be paying attention. But beyond that, you know, like I said, for me personally, I'm not as concerned. Interesting. So, are there any gene polymorphisms that someone may have, which make more than may make them more susceptible to a virus like this? Yeah, interesting. Um, it's a great question. I think, you know, anything relating to heavy metals, of course. Oh, okay. A lot of those heavy metal genes, they're they're called glutathione genes. Right. Um, and glutathione is like your body's main antioxidant. Yeah. So when your body detoxes some of these heavy metals and things, it uses glutathione. And if you have poor glutathione genes, Mm -hmm. you don't do that. You don't have that process. You know, you're not functioning in that process very well. So I suppose, like I say, there's, of course, not going to be research, right? Because the corona is such a new thing and nobody's looked at genes relating to how the coronavirus impacts them. But, Mm -hmm. you know, my hunch would be, anything relating to glutathione would be a problem and and it's an easy fix because you can supplement glutathione yeah liposomal glutathione can be very exactly. helpful for the body definitely right and i recommend that anyways when people have glutathione gene issues yeah um because it helps clear heavy metals and you definitely don't want like mercury to be high and cadmium and chromium and cobalt and all these things because all these heavy metals ultimately i mean they're so destructive in so many different ways in particular to your brain so mm. you know yeah, it's good to get that glutathione up. We're being attacked from every angle by everything. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think will happen in the next few months? Well, I think it'll just blow over. I think I feel like, you know, people, there's going to be a certain point where two out of three people get immune to it because they've had it already, and then it mm. just stops spreading. Um, and then it'll just die out and people will stop talking about it. Fingers crossed. But it seems, but, yeah, but it seems to be particularly contagious. So that's, it's definitely a hot topic. Yeah, it sure is. But what does optimal health mean for you, Dr. Anthony? I mean, it's different for different people. I, I mean, me personally, yeah. you know, I want to be able to lift heavy weights. I don't want any pain. Oops. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. Are you, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. I can hear you. Hello. Hello. Oh, sorry. Okay. It, it like suddenly, yeah, it cut out again. Um, so, yeah, so optimal health for you, you is to be able to lift heavy weights. Yeah, lift heavy weights for me, uh, you know, do things with my children, 
basically not feel tired all the time. You know, things that most people wait until they're sick before they start thinking about their health. But for me, I'm always trying to optimize. So I actually feel energetic and I feel like doing things and I'm motivated. And, and again, strength is a factor, you know, just overall vitality. Yeah, I think mental and physical, it's good to have both, right? I think we need yeah. a, a mix a mix of it all. And, exactly. Uh, how old do you expect to live? I mean, like Dave Asprey wants to be 108, 180. What, what's your goal? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> no? Okay. Interesting. And have you yeah, actually it's... had your telomeres tested? So you know... Oh, yeah, three times, yeah. Really? And oh. has, has it changed those three times? Well, no, because I did all the three of the experiments. I did it as an experiment, like a scientific experiment. Okay. Because a lot of people complain about the telomere testing, and they say it's not very accurate. Oh, I see. And so one of the ways to combat that as a scientist is you do an N of three. You do three at the same time, and then you see how similar they all are. So what was the result? Oh, they're all, they're all super similar. So uh, I actually have a lot of trust in the telomere test. At least the telo years is the test that I used. Okay, that's good. Um, and so how were you younger, older? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm quite a bit younger, but... You know, I do have good genetics, too, so I can't say that it's all about what I'm doing and me. But <laughs> but I've, I've seen people have really good success reversing their telomeres after they do their genetic report. One particular example sticks out at me. I had a guy with really bad telomere genes. You can mm -hmm. actually have genes that shorten your telomeres, so wow. that shortens your lifespan. That would suck. <laughs> yeah. Well, the good news is when you identify them, you can fix them, right? True. Yes, yeah. One of them, for example, is related to zinc. So usually just supplementing zinc will bump up your telomere length and yeah. shorten your lifespan uh, or, or lengthen your lifespan. Mm -hmm. But then one of them is tricky to fix, and the only way that I know how to fix it is a peptide you have to inject. Mm. Um, and again, that's a pretty rare gene, but, but I had a, a situation where somebody had that gene and I recommended, I told them, look, you know, it's a pain in the neck to go injecting yourself all the time. It, but the protocol is pretty simple. You just do like five injections and then you wait six months and you do five injections and you wait six months and you, and the peptide, um, it's, it's called epithalon. Mm -hmm. and, and, okay. And, Never heard of it. Yeah. I should I call it? Yeah. Losing you again. It's actually banned by the Olympics. It's banned by the Olympics, did you say? Nope. Oh, hello. Dr. Anthony, are you still there? Hello, hello. Hello, Dr. Anthony. Oh, I think I got you back. Hello. You're there, you're there. Five, Hi. Hi. Four, yes. Three. Okay, good. We're back, we're back. So okay. unusual today. Yeah. yeah. It's that coronavirus. I'm it telling is. You. <laughs> it's getting everywhere. It's spreading. It's spreading. All the traffic on the, on the Skype. Yeah. No, so I was saying this, this peptide, it's actually banned by the Olympic Association because it's such a performance enhancing benefit. It makes your cells younger. So you get more endurance. Wow. Fantastic. So they don't, they don't let athletes use it, but most of us aren't professional athletes, so we can use it, especially if you have bad genes, you know, that, and so, you're, you're so this guy, this, yeah? yeah, he was, I think his actual age was 55. I have this story on Instagram too, because he allowed me to share it, but, <laughs> and his telomere age at the time of genetic testing, I think was like 57 or something. And then he dropped that down to like 38 or something. I mean, it was really extreme. It was really great to see. Wow. Amazing. That's very mm. good. That's so cool. I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's heartwarming to you, right? You know that you oh yeah, that's somebody. why I do this. Yeah, for sure. Now, as we know, like ninety-three percent of all diseases and our lifestyle and environmentally brought upon ourselves. What two lifestyle and environmental areas do you think are most important for people to address? Um, and uh, what you know, what is the best biohack for each? Would it be sleep or water or? Oh yeah! Wow. Well, t I think it's personalized, right? I mean, everything I do is through a lens of personalizing. So for some people it is sleep because their sleep is terrible. In that case, their sleep should absolutely be the number one priority. But then for other people, their sleep is already pretty exceptional. True. Yeah. Exercising because they're just sedentary all day at work and then they're going home and watching Netflix all evening. <laughs> exactly. So it's changing, it's basically changing your bad habits for some good habits, right? Hello. Hi, I'm still here. I can hear you. 
Hello. There we go. There. Yep, <laughs> you're there. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's basically yep. just changing some bad habits for some good habits, moving more, sleeping more, that kind of stuff. Yep. Oh. Uh -huh. Prioritize. Personalized. Sorry. Prioritize and per personalize. I think you said. Did you? Yeah, I was saying I don't. I don't personal. I don't prioritize any specific thing until I've seen people's genetics. Yeah, that's. A, I think. And that's then I try. And, it's about bespoking. Yeah, and then and then customize yeah. it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and what do you think? I mean, a lot of my clients, for example, have mold exposure. What What do you find is? Mm -hmm. uh, do you find, is there anything gene related there or anything in your findings in terms of research that can be helpful? Or For sure. Know? Yeah, in fact, one of the problems with molds is they secrete an estrogen chemical called uh, xerolenone. It's Z-E-A, xerolenone. Yeah. And it's really damaging because it messes up your hormones, right? And even in animals, if you feed them moldy grain, that messes up their reproductive cycles and things. Yeah. Um, and so a big part of it of detoxing from mold is detoxing from that artificial estrogens that the molds are secreting. So saunas are really useful, for example. And of course, the main thing is you just have to get out of that moldy environment, right? Yeah, that's number one, right? There's, there's just no no cheating in that regard. No, for sure. I mean, actually, I've been studying a lot of um, Chinese medicine, and they use uh, Szechuan peppers to clear out uh, any mold and damp infections in the body. Um, and yep. apparently it's very good for your gut microbiome. What do you think of TCM and uh, Ayurvedic medicine? Yeah, I mean, I've never really looked into it much, but what's interesting, okay. in China, I've worked with some Chinese medical doctors, Yeah. and they, they have a lot of research on it, and a lot of it's beneficial, and it's proven in the actual research. And he, this Chinese doctor told me a lot of that research is in Chinese, in the language in the Chinese language, and they haven't even translated to English, so I don't even have access to it. <laughs> wow. Which is frustrating for me, right? Because yeah. I want to tap into that knowledge. Yeah, that's that. You need to get that translated for sure. Right. Gosh, that would be definitely good. And what are your thoughts on intermittent fasting, on autophagy? Oh, I'm a huge fan, yeah. I mean, intermittent fasting, a lot of people, like I would say the majority of people have genes that indicate they should be intermittent fasting and it's just so beneficial for your brain and for your longevity. Um, and do yeah, you, and I do it personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. But do you think that, I mean, I'm very much towards the, everything, all the studies have been done on men. I think females have to do it slightly mm -hmm. different and things like the keto right. diet. We need, we need to, we've got more complex environments yeah. to play with, I think. For sure, I agree. Uh, I mean, and and so a, lot, a little bit of it is just self, you know, self experimentation because, mm. you know, it's hard, and that's true for practically everything, right? Yeah, it's true. Because yeah. they lump all these people into like a hundred thousand people in a study, and then they determine whether some vitamin is beneficial or whatever. It's not a very good way to study things, so. No, it's a shame, really. And what do you think of, like, this 100% carnivore diet? I mean, okay, you know, a lot of people have a lot of problems with oxalates and a lot of, you know, causing lots of pain, but do you think this extremism is good, back to our primal ways, or do you think it's too much one way? Um, I think it, there's a time and place, right? Mm -hmm. And just like I think there's a time and place for the keto diet and things like that, like, um, you know, I'm not a fan for everybody doing it. <laughs> I've, I've seen a lot of people with like nausea and, and things like that. And, and I even tried to get a carnivore diet study organized okay. and I had 10 people sign up for it where they were going to go strict carnivore for 90 days, just only eating head to nose to tail wow. uh, animal. Yeah. And every single one of them dropped out. No way. <laughs> and these were like highly motivated people. And the problem was I didn't allow them to cheat, right? I didn't allow them to have any vegetables at all. Because that's what the carnivore diet's supposed to be, right? Yeah, totally. Zero carb, yeah. And every single one of them cheated, which tells me that most people that say they're doing a strict carnivore diet are either like in the very, very, very minority or they're cheating and they're just not admitting it. Yeah, gosh. Um, but there's a, t there's a place for it in terms of some of the autoimmune conditions and things. Yeah, I, I kind of find that, you know, whatever whatever it is you're looking for, you'll find the answers in somewhere. You know, there's people that will verify the vegan diet, the keto diet and all that stuff, but you have to remember your body's like completely individual, right? So and that's exactly. where that's, your yeah. analysis helps to understand right. what would be best for you, right? 
Yeah, exactly. That's why I never get religious about any of those kind of diets and say this is the one way that everybody should be doing because it's just, it's not what the genetics tell us. Yeah. You know, the genetics tell us it has to be customized to every individual. That's true. And let's talk a little bit about vitamin D. Now, you are yeah. working with a fascinating lamp. Tell us more. Yeah. Well, I just got this ultraviolet lamp that has the the proper UV wavelengths to give your skin the conversion of vitamin D, the cholesterol to vitamin D conversion. Mm -hmm. So in the winter here in Minnesota, I mean, where I live at the Mayo Clinic, it gets dark at like 4 p.m., you know, and it's, yeah. and it's kind of depressing. And thankfully, I don't have those depression genes where I get depression in the winter, although a lot of people do when I do DNA consulting. Yeah, I but think I have some lack of dopamine, serotonin, these things, yeah. Yeah, and the vitamin D lamp is a great way to do it because the real it's just better than taking pills. I mean, taking vitamin D is important, but I th there's something about actually getting the UV light um, that just seems more beneficial. Now, there's not a ton of studies that prove that really soundly, but I've just heard it from so many people. You can't argue with somebody who has depression and then they fix it. Yeah, and and the vitamin D pills just don't seem to fix it, but the sunshine, a lot of the time, it will. So, um, I think, so yeah. You know, it, we just know that from putting our head in the sun or just, or, you know, waking up in the sunshine or waking up in right. the pouring with rain. It's like, you know, right. don't you think? It's a big so, difference. But yeah. to have, yeah. and your, your lamp gives you the old, the, the good, a good dose for one day is what, in three minutes or something like that, is that right? Exactly, yeah, it's pretty quick, yeah. Wow. Um, and it has a little timer on it so you can't go over your time and you have to wear the uv protective goggles and things but but yeah it certainly works i've been I'm, I'm still in the middle of my experiment because i'm doing it exactly for one month but it's it's raising my vitamin d levels so that's good and you're not obviously you're not getting any sun from anywhere else and you're correct exactly supplement, so yep, okay. yep, exactly. wow that's great i'd love to hear what happens at the end of that for sure yeah, watch my Instagram. <laughs> oh, well, I do, I do. Um, and what are your thoughts on, you know, there's a lot of, like, on sugar and sugar substitutes. Is sugar as bad as people, you know, we've been sort of now saying that, you know, and all these, like, sorbitol, aspartame, maltitol. Right. I mean, agave sugar was supposed to be fine, but now it's horrific. So. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, again, even with that, it depends on your genetics because some people, yeah. they have a pretty amazing genes for dealing with carbs. In general, and, and of course, those people are always the ones that tell everybody else that carbs are no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? They're the skinny they ones running around. <laughs> yeah, they don't have any personal experience that suggests otherwise. Yeah. And it's always ironic when I have those people on, like when I have a husband and wife couple or something, like, and they're doing their genetics, and one of them has terrible genes for carbs, and one of them has exceptionally good genes for dealing, <clears throat> for metabolizing sugar and things. Yeah, that would be annoying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and and so there's there's a lot of individual variation. So I'm not afraid of carbs or even sugar to some degree, but it depends on how how athletic you are, or I guess how how active you are in pushing yourself, and and what your goals are, what your genes are, what your age is, right? right. Yeah, it's like true. the older you get, the less carbs you probably want to be eating. Um, yeah, and you need, to keep your you need to keep your muscle mass, don't you? So you need the protein for that, and you need the fats for your right. brain. So, yep. you know, yep. that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I think I on the fructose, I had a plus minus, avoid consuming fructose on a yep. regular basis. So Exactly. And then yeah. you were like, well, what's fructose? That's like a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I had somebody, I had a client from Romania, oh. I'm, um, and she was really slim, like, you know, I guess in Europe you guys do a different units. In the UK you'd probably do stones or something. <laughs> uh, kgs here. Yeah, kilograms, that's true. Yeah. yeah, but basically she was like 100 pounds, you know, whatever that is in kilograms, just yeah. really slim and skinny. Yeah. But she had a bad version of the same gene, and she had a fatty liver, and she had been diagnosed. I mean, her, her, her stomach had actually hurt, so she went into the doctor and got a scan, and it showed that her liver was fatty. And she had been eating a lot of fruit because she thought that was healthy, but she had this gene. And, of course, she was a plus-plus, so she was a little bit more extreme. Right, right. But, but her body wasn't metabolizing the fructose. It was just storing as fat in her liver. So it was really doing her whole body a disservice because the liver is involved in filtration and all kinds of other things. 
so it was it's not good and of course she's fixed that which is good but oh, that's so as soon as she got the results from you it was kind of like a light bulb yeah, yeah, yeah right jeez it's just amazing I mean a lot of my older clients as well they think and they say to me cancer and memory loss are a part of growing old and to be expected mm -hmm. you know I try to educate them that it doesn't have to be like that but you know sometimes right. teaching old dogs new tricks can be very tricky um, what right. do you say about sort of this whole getting old and deterioration theory yeah, I agree with you. I think, especially your mind, it's, you know, you can do so much to prevent all of these, you know, these slow degeneration mm. uh, issues and these chronic diseases that, you know, I think there's just no excuse now with the knowledge that we have that you should at least be doing some of that stuff, you know, as yeah. just a default. And the, the more precise and the more specific you can get, the better. Because it is a lot, right? There's so much information. You can kind of obsess over it. But if you get real specific and you figure out exactly where your flaws might be in your genetics, then it, it's easier to prevent those kinds of degenerations because you can take it at a more targeted level, if that makes sense, more customized. So, yeah, I mean, my theory is, you know, that's unnecessary. A lot of it is unnecessary. Now, not all of it because we haven't completely discovered you know, all the mechanisms of everything and aging and epigenetics and epigenetics are a big factor. Definitely. But just from the DNA perspective, we've underwent so much information. Like you said, I mean, the report is jam full, right? So yeah. you can, you can get a lot from it. 100%. And down to a different topic now, what are your thoughts on colon hydrotherapy? I mean, have you read one of my favorite books, Colon Health by Norman W. Walker? No, but I've I've been interested in, in like the vagus nerve and things like that. Okay. Okay. Because there's should, some Yeah, you should read this book. It's one one of the most fascinating books I've actually ever read. It's tiny, it's not even that big. But yeah, um, I'm gonna write it, know, I'm writing the, it down. And the importance of colon hydrotherapy. Um, right. and how to you know because basically we're all full of shit and you know we keep oh, yeah. we, we eat all the time we keep pushing stuff and stuff on top and some people have problems with their bowels and you're just not eliminating everything you're walking around with pounds and pounds of this ma right. waste matter inside us and and it causes the, the build up in it, the build up of it causes lots of different diseases so oh, it's yeah. quite fascinating right. um have you had any experience with anything like that in terms of any of your clients or anything I talk to people about it sometimes, but I don't know enough about it. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, it's definitely a topic I'd like to learn more. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll check out that book for sure. Cool. Let me know what you think. And then yeah. if we talk about water, a lot of my clients as well, this is something that I talk to them about. Um, what do you think? What's your, what do you think is the ultimate in terms of water? Is it Kangen water? Is it osmosis water? Is it alkaline water? You know, there's a lot of right. controversy out there about that. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, me personally, I use the reverse osmosis. Okay. But I have a remineralizer, so it adds back magnesium and things like that. Um, and my unit is unique because it's all stainless steel. There's no plastic. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it has a pump on it, so there's no, like, storage tank. So most of the reverse osmosis systems, they have, like, a big plastic storage tank under the sink that yeah. just breeds bacteria and mold. Oh. But the one I have, it's called Purify Guru, G-U-R-U. Um, and it's tricky because you basically have to be willing to install it yourself. I mean, that's what I did because you won't find it locally in general, but it's such a great unit. It was worth it for me, and I've loved it. I've had it for over a year now, and, you know, I've done filter replacements. It's real easy to use. It's really effective. It's water tastes good. So that's how I do it. I test my water. So I'm pretty particular about it, and I think it's super important to and do. Do they sell the, the remineralization as well to go with the yep. reverse osmosis? Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yep. It has four stages. It has a uh, cotton filter just to get the big particles like iron mm -hmm. out. And then the next stage, it's like a big stainless steel canister with uh, activated charcoal. Right. So that gets rid of all the estrogen chemicals and all kinds of pesticides and herbicides and hormones and things. And then the next stage is reverse osmosis to remove everything else, yeah. and like all the heavy metals and aluminum and things. And then the final stage is reverse is back to the remineralizer, um, and then it comes out the sink, you know. And then do you have that in your, your showers and your baths as well or just in the kitchen? No, for my whole house I have an activated, I just have activated charcoal, like a big giant activated charcoal filter. That's cool, yeah. Okay. 
Interesting. Yeah. But we have really bad water here where I live. I mean, it's particularly the the government has, you know, the EPA in America where they have like upper limits and safety limits and all this. And most cities in America are like one or two chemicals are above the government's recommended safety limit. But where I live, there's there's actually seven chemicals in the water that are above the government's recommended limit. Wow, that's insane. Particularly terrible. It smells bad. You know, it's disgusting. And people come here to the Mayo Clinic and and they move here like as researchers and things. And I'm friends with a lot of these people, and they get rashes on their skin and uh, immediately. God, and then I tell I tell them, look, it's it's not because of stress. It's because the water's so bad. You got to get a filter, you know. And they do that, and it, it clears right up. That's crazy. But what about hydrogen water? And I've been doing a lot of read, reading about that as well. Do you rate that? I don't know what the hydrogen water. Yeah, so you can either you get uh, you can get like you can put your water then into like a hydrogenator bottle and then you push the button oh, yeah. and it pushes all the hydrogen molecules into it. Apparently that's good if you have the pure osmosis and then you hydrogenate sure. it. So. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. I still have to read that fourth phase of water book and see. Yeah. Um, you know, there's only so much I can <laughs> I can I do because I actually do research too at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, what are your thoughts on this whole Google and censorship of all these many issues, influential people in the wellness industry? Think it's crazy? Yeah, I think people should be able to decide for themselves, you know, have the information presented and then make their own informed decisions instead of having Google try and tell you what to think. I mean, I think it's terrible. It's, like, it's all about control. Everything's about control and fear, I think. Yeah, YouTube, you know, Facebook's doing it now. It's just getting worse, you know, and it's only, it's probably only going to get worse, but I don't know. Stay in our lane and be wise, right? I don't know. It's challenging because at least for somebody like me, I have a PhD, so I can always fall back on that. Like, it's harder if you don't have a degree, so then you don't seem as official, but your information is just as good. You know, it's not like I have a, I don't have a market on the information. You know, I learn just like everybody else does from different sources, and it's it's really frustrating that anybody is getting censored, you yeah, know, with no, any of this. I agree. So let's go a little bit light topic now. So if I want to play a bit of a game, um, a little rapid fire phrase game. So I'm going to say some words or phrases, and you need to tell me your instinctive first thoughts or responses that come to mind, okay? Okay. Okay, so lectins destroy your health. Yeah, I think for a lot of people they do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Through inflammation. That's true. So it's about bioindividuality, basically. Oh, yeah. Uh, McDonald's, I'm loving it. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, it's engineered so that you love it, but that doesn't mean <laughs> it's good for you. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Um, 5G is safe. Oh, man. <laughs> Not if you believe what scientists are, that actually study it are saying. Yeah. Beyond Meat looks, cooks, and satisfies like beef. Better for you and the planet. Yeah, is that the one with a million times more, est or 11 million times more estrogen <laughs> yeah. than actual beef? <laughs> That's the one, yeah. So made full of, like, I don't know, about 30 different, you know, disgusting products. Yeah. Yeah. Craziness, absolute crazy. Um, global warming, the poles are melting. Yeah, again, outside of my general scope, but mm -hmm. I defer to experts, you know. I don't, I don't trust my own knowledge because I haven't even done the research, but... You know, um, sort of I happily vaccinate my children. Do the same. Oh boy, you know, I'm pre I'm pretty cautious about that. Maybe if you get bit by a skunk that has rabies. But otherwise, don't you know? I think there's probably quite a lot of rubbish in them. But, oh yeah, you know, for sure. Personal decision, right? So, um, and CBD can help your body balance and deal with stresses better. Yeah, it's anti-inflammatory, so. I would say yes. That's good. Um, and then the medical medium, celery juice is the most powerful medicine of our time, healing millions worldwide. Not for me. I'm, I get a headache from it. I'm sensitive to it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have an allergy to it. Well, I tell you what, that's a wonderful note to finish on. Thank you so much. Um, so just a little bit. So what, what are you up to for the next year? What are you, what are you working on? What's your future? Well, um, I'm working on some books that, kind of connect some of these DNA topics because there's a lot of information here that 
people just it's not part of the common conversation i want it to be so i want to get that information out there in the form of a few books so i'm working on that pretty hard very cool and finally i know you said it before in the other interview but remind us of your social media sites and your website so that we can all support and follow you yeah thanks um my website with the dna consulting it's called ajconsultingcompany.com mm -hmm. and the uh the, my favorite social media is Instagram at Anthony G J is inst is my Instagram page. Okay, and that's Anthony. That's letter G, yeah, and then right. J A Y, yep. right? Correct. Perfect. Well, it has been an absolute honor and a blessing, Dr. Anthony. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much love and appreciation to you uh, for who you are and what you have been doing in the world of wellness, as well as your time today to talk to me. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Remember, folks, the decisions we make today will define our tomorrow. Take care.